and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to a Barca News Roundup coming your way today where we have plenty on the agenda. We're going to be talking about Barca's potential exclusion from the Champions League, the full update on that. We're also going to be talking about João Felix. There's a lot surrounding him right now in the media and a lot of it not very good at all. But we're also going to be talking today about Claudio Echeverri, the Argentine wonder kid. Could he be on his way to Barca? It is all coming up for you right now. Let's do it. But let's first of all kick off with those rumours then that we are hearing right now. And it is coming specifically from one German source there by the name of Welt, who say that Barcelona could well be banned from the Champions League for several seasons due to violations of financial fair play. UEFA there apparently are unhappy with what has been reported in Barca's finances and they could exclude them from as early as the 2024 to 25 seasons. So honestly, is there any truth in this? Because the one thing that you have to say immediately, guys, the timing on this is extraordinary. It could not be more convenient here that just after the Super League decision was announced to the world, literally the day after, oh, now Barca are banned from the Champions League. Now Barca have done something wrong and UEFA are going to punish them. That there is absolutely immaculate timing here that we're hearing these rumours. But I would just like to say, guys, with regards to financial fair play, if we have managed to get things past La Liga, if we have managed there to get Javier Tebas and La Liga to approve our financial report and that they have sanctioned all of that, then I guarantee you it's enough for UEFA. We know how difficult Tebas and La Liga make our lives. We know how difficult it is to actually do anything and bring in any players in that league. If we've managed to do that, then there is no way UEFA could find any problem there with our reporting. Other leagues are nowhere near as strict as La Liga are, so we certainly wouldn't be doing anything wrong there. And I would also find it quite incredible if we were the ones punished. There's been no punishments for FFP to Man City for example, or Paris Saint-Germain. They're fine. Oh, they've done everything absolutely perfectly. They couldn't be at risk of any violation. But when it's Barca, it's big news in the media, isn't it? It's a club there that everybody wants to see punished, and particularly there, UEFA, I'm sure, would love to do it. But the reality is right now, from the club we are hearing, the message is very simple. We have done nothing wrong. It's another case here whereby we've no idea where this rumour has come from. We've no idea how it's come about. But Barca have done everything in order on the financial side and I do not expect us to be banned from the Champions League. However though there is then the matter of João Felix right now because we cross two matters on the pitch because I've got to say there has been so much written here in the past few days about João Felix there and also about the way that Xavi is feeling towards him right now because you will of course notice he was taken off at half time against Almeria. Xavi was very very angry with the whole team I think but João Felix there was the one who was sacrificed at halftime, very unhappy with his performance with Xavi, and then to send out an even stronger message than that, Xavi then started Felix in the friendly game against Club America, literally hours later of course it was the next day, he started him then in that game, almost as though to say, well, now you can go out there and play this game, that obviously I don't think anybody no first team player wanted to play and in that game, João Felix did perform very, very poorly it was a poor game from him, and that has certainly not helped with the confidence or the feeling right now surrounding Zhao. And it is indeed being said right now in the media that Xavi does not trust Zhao Felix right now. He has not been convinced by him during his time at the club so far. And from 2024, apparently, we may start seeing less of Felix in the starting lineup. It is already being reported now that Xavi would ideally like to return to that four midfield setup. Apparently, he would have done that already, maybe even long ago if Gavi had not gotten injured and if that was to be the case if we were to start with more midfielders Zhao Felix would apparently be the man that would drop out of the lineup and look guys I have no doubt here that we've got to demand more from Zhao Felix like we have of many players right now but certainly Felix we know that he can do better we've seen glimpses we've seen signs of what he can do and there's no doubt here that Xavi has every right to ask for more and demand more but what I would just say on him he has scored three goals 
Wolves in his last five competitive games for Barca. I would say of late, he's one of the very, very few players in Barca colours who actually looks capable of scoring, who actually looks capable there of putting the ball in the back of the net. And I think it's interesting that we're seeing here such harsh treatment, such strong treatment from Xavi when it comes to somebody like Jao Felix. But then you look at Lewandowski and he seems kind of untouchable. So why is there such a big difference there? Because I am more than happy here for Xavi to be demanding, to be very, very strong in his view as the coach. But I want to see that applied right across the team, right across the board there, fairly to every player. Because let's also be honest here, guys, in the current form of the players that we have, if you're only going to line up with two attackers and they're Lewandowski and Rafinha, that doesn't fill me with confidence. If I am an opposition defender and those are the only two attackers I'm facing, I feel like I can have a good day. I feel as though I can stop Barcelona and that is certainly not the road that we should be going down. So I think Xavi here needs to be strong, needs to demand more from every single player. That is what we need right now more than anything. But when it comes to our attack, there are certainly big questions. However though, guys, speaking about attacking influences on the field, could we be about to add a wonderful, wonderful attacking player? I want to talk here about Claudio Echeverri, who if you haven't heard of him, he is a 17-year-old Argentine creative midfielder. He actually he turns 18 in just a few days time on January the 2nd and he now stormed into the spotlight in the football world at the under 17 World Cup. It was just a few weeks ago there when he was the star of Argentina's run to the semi-final which included a hat-trick against Brazil and I would definitely invite you guys to follow the link in the description and head over to Sofa Score here to take a look at some of these performances from Echeverri. He really was at the heart of everything for Argentina in terms of his goal output in terms of his influence on play. He was one of those players whereby even in that tournament, you were sitting there thinking, this is a serious talent. We are looking at somebody right here who is very, very special. And it had been rumoured that Barca had been tracking Echeverri for some time, even before that tournament. But then the links only intensified once Echeverri was asked, what club would you like to play for? He said, besides River Plate, I'd say Barca. Because I'm a big Leo Messi fan, I always used to watch him playing for Barca when I was a kid, so I would say Barca, which has really sent the media into a frenzy there. The speculation has really ramped up, but it did even more so recently when Xavi was asked in his press conference about the interest in Echeverri. You know, are you interested in him? Is he a player that you like? And Xavi said, the boy is a talent. Even beyond the hat-trick that he scored at the Under-17 World Cup, he is a difference maker. He can be a player who can make the difference in a team, but that is something for the scouting department to deal with right now. So Chaffee's certainly not shutting down the rumours. Barca are indeed big admirers of this young man. And I thought it was interesting that today he actually confirmed he will not renew his contract at River Plate. His contract right now expires in one year's time in December 2024. He has a release clause in that deal of 25 million euros. And apparently Barca, they are willing to pay that clause. They are willing to pay 25 million to bring in Echeverri from River Plate and it's an interesting move here that Barca are looking to make because it's almost like what we saw with Vitor Roque, an exciting young talent, another one here from South America they're looking to get in early on these players, they don't want to be overpaying later on in their career in a few years time when you're talking about 100 million valuations maybe in terms of the transfer fee, Barca need to get in early, they need to be ahead of the curve on these younger players and is Echeverri the next Next one here that we should be looking at. Do you feel as though he's a player that we should target? Do you feel as though he's a player that could work in this Barcelona team? Is it a profile that we need at the club right now? Or is this simply a case of he's a big talent? He is an enormous talent coming through and Barca feel they just have to secure him. So do let me know your thoughts there on Echeverri down below. If you have seen him, what do you make of his game? And would you like to see him at Barca? Do let me know as well, guys, your thoughts on all the other topics that we discussed today. I will catch you soon with more videos coming up. Of course, Christmas is on its way. And thank you indeed for all of your support. But until next time, as always, Vishka, Yelbasa. Uh -huh.